Measures of Central Tendency Average occurs regularly in our daily life and it is an important tool in statistics. There can be several different types of average or sometimes called measures of central tendency. Let's start with mean. The mean is the most commonly used measure of central tendency. When we speak of average, we always refer to the mean. It is found by adding the values of the data and dividing by the total number of values. When we solve for population mean, we have the formula mu equals summation of x over n. And if we solve for the sample mean, we have x bar equals summation of x over n. So there's no difference in the formula in solving for the population mean and sample mean. N is the total number of observations in the population. Capital letter N is used to represent population, while small letter N is used for sample. Let us take this example. This is for ungrouped data. A researcher collects data on the ages of recipients of doctoral degree in science and engineering, and his study yields the following. We're tasked to determine the average of the recipients. Since the given example is for ungrouped data, we're going to use the formula x bar equals summation of x over n. That means we are looking for the sample mean. Substituting in the formula summation of x, we're going to add all the data given. So we have 37 plus 37 plus 24 down to 27 divided by n, which is 10. So we have 350 divided by 10. Therefore, the average of the recipients is 35. For group data, the midpoints of the classes are used for the values of the x. So first, we have to find the midpoint for each class and place them in a column. Second is multiply the frequency by the midpoint for each class and place them in another column. Third is find the sum of the resulting column in step 2 and last is you substitute it in the formula below. F stands for the frequency and X sub M stands for the midpoints of each classes. Let us take this example. 80 randomly selected light bulbs were tested to determine their lifetime in hours. The following frequency distribution was obtained. Find the mean. Notice that we're given with class boundaries and frequencies. So once the data are grouped, that means we are looking or solving for the population mean. Yes, you solve for the midpoint in each class boundary. So we're going to add another column for the midpoint. So to solve for the midpoint, we have the formula lower class boundary plus upper class boundary divided by 2. So we have 52.5 plus 63.5 divided by 2. We have the midpoint for class boundaries 52.5 to 63.5 equal to 58. And then do the same for the remaining classes. For the second step, multiply the frequency at the midpoint in each class boundary. So we have... 6 times 58, we now have our fourth column, the product of our frequency and midpoint. Multiplying 6 by 58, we have 348. Then do the same for the remaining classes. The third step is find the sum of the second and fourth column. That is, we're going to add all our frequencies and the product of our frequency and midpoint. We have 80 and 6807 respectively. By substituting in the given formula, we have 6807 divided by 80. The mean is 85.09. Now let's proceed to median. 
it is the midpoint of the data array. Before finding its value, the data must be arranged in order from least to greatest or vice versa. The median will either be a specific value or will fall between two values. If there is an even amount of numbers in the list, the middle pair must be determined, added together, and divided by 2 to find the median value. The median can be used to determine an approximate average. For example, seven mothers were selected and given a blood pressure check. Their systolic pressure were recorded below. To find their median, we have to arrange from least to greatest or vice versa. And arranging this, we come up with this. And the middlemost value falls in 121. Therefore, the median is 121. Let's talk about group median. There are also steps to follow to solve for the median of group data. First is you have to make a table of cumulative frequency. Second, divide n, the number of frequency, by 2 to get the halfway point. Third is locate the median class in the cumulative frequency column. And fourth is substitute in the formula given below. N stands for the sum of frequencies, CF, cumulative frequency of the class preceding or before the median class, F stands for the frequency of the median class, W for the class width, and LMD, lower boundary of the median class. Take this example. The record of 21 people in a 100 meter race is summarized in the given frequency table. Determine the median of the given data. We're given with time in seconds and frequency. First step is make a table of cumulative frequency or less than cumulative frequency. So we're going to take 2 as our starting point. Add it by 7, we have 9. Then add by 8, we have 17. Add by 4, we have 21. The second step is divide n, the number of frequency by 2, to get the halfway point. We have n over 2. Our n is equal to 21 divided by 2. We have the halfway point equal to 10.5. Third step is locate the median class in the cumulative frequency column. Remember that our halfway point is 10.5. Looking at the less than cumulative column, we can see that 10.5 lies within 17. The interval that corresponds to 17 is the interval 61 to 65. Therefore, the median class is the interval 61 to 65. The last step is substitute in the formula given. We have to take note that n is the sum of frequencies, cf the cumulative frequency of the class preceding or before the median class, f the frequency of the median class, w for the class width, and l sub md the lower boundary of the median class. By looking at the table, we have n equal to 21 since the total number of frequencies is 21. For CF, which is the cumulative frequency before the median class, we have to remember that our median class is 61 to 65, 
with 17 as the cumulative frequency. So the cumulative frequency before 17 is 9. Our CF is equal to 9. And our F, frequency of the median class. So the frequency of our median class is 8. And for W is 5, since the interval in each classes is 5. And L sub MD is 60.5. We can solve this by subtracting 0 0.5 to 61. By substituting in the formula, we have the median approximately equal to 61.44. Let's talk about mode. It is the value that occurs most often in the data set. A data can have more than one or none at all. The mode for group data is the modal class. The modal class is the class with the largest frequency. The mode is the only measure of central tendency that can be used in finding the most typical case when the data are nominal or categorical. To find the mode of an ungrouped data, find the frequency of each number, value, or observation in the given data set. Then, choose the number, value, or observation having the highest frequency as mode. To solve for the mode of grouped data, just substitute it in the given formula, where L sub MO is the lower boundary of the modal class, W for the class with, D sub 1, the difference of the frequency of the modal class and the class preceding it, D sub 2, difference of the frequency of the modal class and the class succeeding it. Let us take this example. Find the mode of the given data set. First is we have to arrange the data set in ascending or descending order to find the mode. Next is we have to determine the number that appeared the most number of times. Let us try solving for the mode of grouped data. The record of 21 people in a 100 meter race is summarized in the given frequency table. Determine the mode of the given data. Again, the same with our median, we're given with time in seconds and frequency. Step one, identify the modal class by determining the interval with the highest frequency. Which modal class has the highest frequency? We have 61 to 65 since it has 8 frequency and is the highest frequency among the classes. Second step is determine the exact lower limit of the modal class. To do this, we just have to subtract 0 0.5 to the lower boundary of our modal class. That is, 61 minus 0 0.5 is 60.5. Third step is substitute in the given formula. Our L sub MO is 60.5, W is 5, D sub 1 is 8 subtracted by 7 is 1, and D sub 2, 8 subtracted by 4 is 4. Adding D sub 1 and D sub 2, we have 1 plus 4 is 5. By substituting in the formula, we now have our mode equal to 61.5. And this falls between our modal class 61 to 65.